before we begin, uh, here's just a little housekeeping. First, it's important to remember that this is not medical advice. I am making this video with the sole purpose of giving you a jumping off point for your own research. Second, be kind to each other in the comments. Everyone's transition looks different, and what works best for you might not be what's best for someone else. Finally, YouTube's algorithm works off a few metrics. Watch time, whether or not you're subscribed, and whether or not you click on to another video from my channel. The best free way for you to support my content creation is to watch the videos all the way to the end, click the like button, and subscribe to my channel. All right, let's get to it. Hello everyone, it's Zach Lettercast, and welcome back to my channel. Or if it's your first time here, welcome for the first time. Today we're going to be covering a, another phalloplasty surgical topic. We're actually going to be covering two variations on the MLD phalloplasty option. And we're going to go kind of basic overview on both of these options. And then I'm going to talk in more specific detail on what the surgical procedure actually looks like. As always, I'm not a medical professional. This is not medical advice. Please always consult your doctors before making any type of medical decisions. Don't listen to me. I'm just a person with a special interest who wants to share what I found with you and encourage you to do your own research and take your health into your own hands. So without further ado, let's begin. The next one I want to talk about is MLD phalloplasty, and it has actually two different options. We're going to go over the broad strokes one first and then the more specific aspects of the newer option that's been developed. So MLD phalloplasty is a surgery that uses tissue from the back muscle to create a good-sized phallus that enables standing to void as well as erectile function with a phallus implant. The musculotaneus latissimus dorsi, MLD, flap comes from a part of the back muscle that includes the thoracodorsal vessels and nerve. The blood supply is connected to the femoral artery and the saphenous vein or the deep inferior epigastric artery and vein. The thoracodorsal nerve is connected to the ilioing guinal nerve, that's a freaking word, um, and because that thoracodorsal nerve is a motor nerve and not a sensory nerve, sensation in the phallus is not expected with this procedure. That's important to note. No nerve connection is done to the dorsal clitoral nerve. Even so, some patients do report tactile sensation in the phallus. So what are the top three things to consider here? It is compatible with urethroplasty and scrotoplasty. In terms of size, you can expect 5 to 6 inches in length, 3.9 to 4.7 in girth, and you do have erogenous preservation because the clitoris is left untouched. And many phases um, are involved here, and it can actually require debulking procedures. If you look back up at girth, I think that kind of speaks for itself there. So a rendition on the MLD phalloplasty is the re latissimus dorsi free flap phalloplasty. And re is the key term here. It is prosthesis free and provides penetrative ability. So let's get into it. In a 2008 study led by Dr. Rano at Masuric University, the re latissimus dorsi free flap phalloplasty was used in phalloplasty surgeries to allow voluntary rigidity of the neophallus. From the first 22 patients, 18 obtained motoric function of the reconstructed phallus, and researchers concluded that this voluntary contraction of the phallus is a consequence of the reinnervation of the transferred muscle, and the contraction is strong enough to stiffen the phallus. In this procedure, the thoracodorsal nerve is structured to the anterior branch of the orbiturator nerve, which runs to the gracilis muscle. All of that to say, yes... It's possible to achieve um, voluntary rigidity of the neophallus using this method. I don't know what the longevity looks like because of how new this is. Um, and then there's some studies that you can look into in terms of learning kind of what this is, how does it work. Number one is going to be the original study. Number two is talking about the technique. And number three is an evaluation of the results in terms of contraction power and voluntary rigidity. There are several surgeons that offer MLD, not nearly as many though as would offer ATL or RFF. MLD is a really specialty type procedure because it involves using a muscle from your back. Um, so these are currently the only surgeons who offer it. 
there are some in the United States, obviously some in uh, the Czech Republic. The MLD phalloplasty process is a little bit more involved than the other processes. This is because it uses tissue from a muscle in the back called the latissimus dorsi, and it is used to allow for erectile function for the neophallus. Now, this surgery is performed in several stages. Preoperatively, the non-dominant arm site region is massaged regularly to improve local skin elasticity in order to allow primary closure. The first surgery consists of removal of the internal natal genitalia, the creation of a neophallus using the latissimus dorsi free flap with microvascular anastomosis and clitoral lengthening and the incorporation into the neophallus, urethral reconstruction using vaginal and labia minora flaps, and the insertion of testicular implants of appropriate size into the neoscrotum, which is created from the labia majora. The internal natal genitalia can be removed by transvaginal or laparoscopic approach. Reconstruction of the neourethra begins with the reconstruction of its fixed part. A vaginal flap is harvested from the anterior vaginal wall with its base close to the female urethra metis. The flap is joined with the remaining part of the divided urethral plate, forming the fixed part of the neourethra in cases with well-developed and wide urethral plate. Further urethral reconstruction includes using all available vascularized hairless tissue to lengthen the neourethra to its maximum extent, preventing postoperative complications such as fistula. The inner surface of both the labia minora and the clitoral skin are dissected to create a flap with appropriate dimensions without detachment from the outer labial surface. This allows for excellent vascularization of the flap. Flaps are joined to create a tube and lengthen the urethra from its bulbar part. The urethra is lengthened further using available clitoral skin. A Y incision is made in the infrapubic area above the clitoris for later fixation of the neophallus. After that, an inguinal incision is made to identify, dissect, and mobilize the femoral artery, saphenous vein, and illoinguinal nerve. The patient is then placed in the lateral decipitus position using beanbags, with the upper torso placed in a full lateral position at 90 degrees and the pelvis tilted at 30 degrees to provide access to the groin, allowing simultaneous flap harvesting and recipient site preparation. Flap planning begins with marking the anterior and superior muscle border. The flap dimensions are planned to match the normal size uh, in adults, which is 11 to 15 centimeters wide and 11 to 18 centimeters long. The glands is designed over the distal 5 centimeters of the flap. A 1 centimeter wide skin strip between the future glands and the shaft is designed to imitate the coronal sulcus. Flap elevation starts with an incision to the anterior skin margin down to the deep fascia, and the plane is developed between the MLD and the serratus anterior muscle using sharp and blunt dissection. The flap is divided inferiorly and medially, cauterizing the large posterior perforators of the intercostal vessels, and then lifted to expose the neurovascular pedicle. Only a small strip of muscle around the blood vessels is isolated to decrease flap bulkiness and allow its safe tubularization. All major branches are identified and carefully litigated. Smaller vessels are cauterized. The neophallus is created while the flap is still profusing on its vascular pedicle by tubularizing the flap. The fully constructed neophallus is detached from the skin oxilla after clamping and dividing the subscapular artery in vein to achieve maximal pedicle length. The donor site defect is commonly closed by a direct approximation. If direct approximation is not possible due to local anatomy, grafting with a split thickness skin graft, STSG, is recommended. The neophallus is transferred to the recipient area and microsurgical anastomosis 
are created between the thoracodorsal and femoral armory, artery and between the thoracodorsal and saphenous vein. Flap viability is assessed by clinical examination, i.e. skin color, local temperature, and capillary refill. After that, the clitoris is incorporated into the neophallus, subsequently using blunt and sharp dissection, a subcutaneous tunnel is created through the neophallus to insert the neourethra in, into the new urethral opening, which is commonly placed in the proximal part of the neophallus. All patients have a suprapubic urine derivation catheter placed for a period of three weeks following a urinary Foley catheter for two weeks. Postoperative assessment of neophallic availability is performed by clinical examination, and vascular patency is monitored by pocket Doppler device. A special dressing is used to keep the graft in an elevated position, preventing pedicle kinking. The second stage, six to nine months after this one, includes further urethroplasty and insertion of penile prostheses. Thank you so much for listening and watching. I hope this was incredibly educational, or at least just a little bit educational. Um, you know, as always, like share, comment, let me know what you want to see me do more of, what you want to see me cover. And if you're not already subscribed, please do hit that subscribe button. Um, your participation in the viewing experience is incredibly important to me, not just for metrics, but because I really view this as a two-way street and I really do view this as my communication with other people who are just like me. So leave those comments share, add me to a playlist, you know, and let me know. Let me know what you want to see me cover because I want to give you stuff that's interesting and engaging to you. Thank you again, and uh, I'll see you next time.